Hey everyone, welcome to Kyber Crystal Gaming. Today we're going to be reviewing the Treyarch version of Spider-Man 2, excluding all other versions of the game because I do not have the same opinions of the other versions. Treyarch is the developer for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox versions of the game. Everyone around my age knows about Spider-Man 2. Not just the movie, but also the video game. It had it all. Free roam, web slinging, awesome villains that you didn't get to see in the film, and it was rated T for Teen. Back in the day, the only real good free roam game was GTA. And if your parents were anything like mine, you wouldn't dare ask for a game with that many things under the ESRB rating guide. Spider-Man 2 gave us kids that free roam ability that GTA offered with a rich environment and tons to do. You could even go back to the game after you beat it and there was still a lot to do. The craziest thing about it was the fact that the game was based off a movie and it was good. Most of the time, as everyone knows, games based off films are terrible, especially back then. Spider-Man 2 is very loosely based off the movie that came out in 2004, and when I say very loosely, I mean about one fourth of the game has similar events that happened in the movie. You play as a college student by the name of Peter Parker who is also Spider-Man. During the course of the story, you encounter many villains including Dr. Octopus, the Rhino, Mysterio, and many more. It is hard to pinpoint the main objective of the game, but basically you have to balance your life between Peter Parker and Spider-Man without letting anyone else know that you are both. The story of the game, though not terrible, is kind of weak and scattered, which in a way adds to the lighthearted feel of swinging around and beating up bad guys. The game focuses on having fun and doing what you, the player, wants to do way more than it does the story. For a game to focus more on playability than a storyline, the controls have got to be good, and Spider-Man 2 does not disappoint. Every web you sling and punch you throw feels amazing, but the camera angles can be a bit of a pain. Also, even though it doesn't happen often, you could be swinging through the city and come across an area where buildings are absent and have nothing to sling your web onto, and that usually makes you fall to your death. They could have prevented this by putting in a pillar or statue or something to sling your web onto, but they didn't, and it does definitely happen. On the bright side, one of these locations is a memorial of the Twin Towers, which looks really cool at night. Another benefit to the game being sandbox based over story based is replayability. No matter how many times I go back and replay this game, I am always surprised at how fun it is and how well it has aged. You can always jump into the game even after you've beaten it and swing through the streets of New York and beat up bad guys or save a balloon from drifting to the video game heavens for a little girl and it's always just as fun. The game also has hidden collectibles throughout the entire city, which gives you incentive enough to put the game back in and play more of it. This greatly adds to the replayability of the game. Now of course any game that is over 10 years old has got to have some elements that have aged, and in this game's case, it would be the graphics. Although it is not surprising, the game has some terrible cutscenes that were noticeably cringy even when the game was released. Peter Parker, who is played by actor Tobey Maguire, doesn't look anything like he did in the movie. The closest character they got was Mary Jane, who is played by Kirsten Dunst, and even she looked vaguely similar. 
While most of my issues for the graphics come from the cutscenes, the cityscapes look a bit blocky and bland as well. Sound production in Spider-Man 2 could have been a little better, but it wasn't terrible. Most of the complaints I had were with the characters voice acting, but I'll give them a little bit of a break since they're screen actors and not really voice actors. I think the only fix for this would have been not basing the game in the same world as the movies and hiring professional voice actors to play the parts. This would have also probably fixed the graphic issues since I'm comparing the characters on screen to the characters in the movie. Also, the music was pretty boring, but it wasn't in the game that much. It seemed mostly to kick in when you had to follow the storyline during each chapter. Despite my personal nostalgia for the game, Spider-Man 2 is still a very fun game to jump into and experience. It is rated among the best superhero video games of all time and in my opinion is the best Spider-Man game to date. With amazing gameplay and timeless replayability, Kyber Crystal Gaming rates this game a 9 out of 10. Thanks for watching.